Hey everyone, how's it going? Kermode here. Welcome to another tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at the synth phase plant by kilohertz. This is a synth I've been hearing a lot more talk about recently. Some people calling it the serum killer. Uh, some people just saying it's the next big synth. And I just want to give you guys a beginner crash course in it. Uh, this is not a review, though I am going to say it is a phenomenal synthesizer. Now, is it the next level synthesizer everyone says it is? I would consider it one of the best in the world. I would definitely consider it up there with Serum. It's better than Serum in some ways. It's worse than Serum in some ways. Um, in my opinion, the strongest part about it is the modulation options, which we'll get into, and specifically the audio rate. Uh, modulation options. So again, this is just a crash course. We're going to go pretty quickly. I'm not going to go into massive detail. That will be longer form videos. I'm just going to kind of quickly go over the wavetable construction in this tutorial as well. Some of that may sound completely random and like jargon to you guys. That'll make sense in a second when we dive in right now. So first things first, when you look at phase plant here, it's actually incredible because it's very shallow while being an incredibly deep synth what i mean by that is you don't have to learn crazy windows or secret hidden settings everything is very clear very easy to learn that's what i love about it and it's kind of broken into three main sections and some small details so the first main section is the section here known as the generators window. And this generators window is where you're going to actually be generating sound. When, you're, when I say you're going to be generating sound, you have multiple different options. This isn't a specific type of synthesis synthesizer. It's not just wavetable. It's not just FM. It's not just a sampler. It's all of them. So it's a semi-modular synthesizer with multiple synthesizer types. And this generator section is where you will be generating the signal. From there, your generators more often than not go into one of three lanes or two or three. These lanes are essentially different sections that you can add effects and processing. So you create your sound here, you process it in here, and at the bottom you use modulators to add movement to your sound. Up top is the final kind of section where you have macros as well as your patch selection. The patch selection, very straightforward. You simply click it, load a patch, and this is where you can also save your patches and load your own personal patches. So let's take a look at the kind of most integral part of this, the generator section. So the generator section works quite simply. Up top, you can see when I hover my mouse over this, it kind of becomes a uh, lighter gray. And all you do is you click it, and then you are given options as to what you want to load. You can load generators, which will actually create the sound, some effects which actually happen inside the generator section as well as some utilities and these just kind of allow you to do some routing volume options etc now the first time you load a generator it's actually going to load it with some utilities which we'll take a look at in a minute so let's look at the first one here let's look at analog so when you load analog what actually happens is you have the analog unit here and that is grouped inside this group here, which also includes this output. Now this output is actually how the signal goes into the lanes. Without it, you won't have any signal. So this is actually kind of important. And this is where the semi-modular aspect comes into it, where you need to kind of be consciously routing things with your generators. So the analog uh, generator works quite simply. You select what wave shape uh, right here and you have some really basic ones saw square triangle and sign and they all have a pretty nice sound to it now you can further edit your waveform with the sync here and you'll notice you get this really nice waveform display when you're doing it 
Now, when you use square, you also have the option to change its pulse width. Pretty straightforward what those two knobs do. If you don't know what sync and pulse width are, you should look it up. Now, over here, you have some common things that will happen across uh, several of the generators. You have level, which is just volume for the specific generator, not a master level. Uh, you have the pitch in both semitones and scents. You can go a total of 60 semitones up and 60 semitones down, as well as as many scents as you would like. Every time you change the scent value, it uh, over 100, it goes up or down a semitone because 100 cents to a semitone. Uh, now there is a harmonic feature here, which is kind of interesting. What it does is it multiplies whatever pitch you're at. So if I am, for example, playing something at 100 hertz and I double it, it would be 200 hertz, which is an octave higher. Now three times the uh, value is not necessarily a uh, an octave higher, it's something in between. So this is very useful for FM synthesis, for example, where you're doing nice ratios of things. So I quite like this, but it, again, it works differently than the semitone value. And then you can also just simply shift things in hertz values, which is nice as well. Now you can also change the phase so where in the cycle your sound is starting if you want to get ultra specific. Now the last part to the analog generator, again quite simple, is just the unison over here. You can stack up to eight unisons. Set your detune value, the spread, so how wide that it feels. So this is nice and mono. That's nice and stereo. And then a blend is blending the kind of non-detuned signal, the kind of straight original signal, with the detuned signal. And that's it for the analog generator. And that's it for the analog generator. So let's actually take that out and let's add a new generator and let's add the noise one in. Now right now, I'm triggering a note, we're not getting any signal. And the reason for that is this generator added in, added in is actually not in the group anymore and it's not routed to this output. Notice how this arrow has gone red. So we have to click and drag this back into the group and you'll notice we can follow the routing into the out module and out. Super easy. So the noise module is quite nice. You have level, just like we had with the analog, but then instead of the waveforms that we had with analog, here we have one type of noise, another which is kind of like a, a digital sort of noise, and this one, which is a kind of sine wavy analog type noise. Now with the noise, you have a slope, which essentially acts as the uh, decibels per octave slope. So how much the uh, high frequencies roll off. So you'll notice the less slope, the brighter it is, the more slope, the darker it is. And actually, once you go fully to the right, you've technically gone from white noise to brown noise because it's going down six decibels per octave. Because if you don't know different noise types, there are uh, names are actually, when it comes to white noise, brown noise, pink noise, etc., blue noise, uh, their name is dependent on the slope of uh, decibels per octave with either lows or highs. So by changing the slope, you're going from white noise to brown noise which essentially is kind of like low passing it, but it's more like adding a nice ramp down on the highs. Uh, you lose that feature with the other two types of noise. There's also a stereo factor, how wide the noise is. And I have to say, I actually, I really like the uh, sound of the, the noise in this. And then you have uh, this stable or random option. And what this is, is stable is gonna continuously trigger the noise from the same I don't want to use the word phase because I wouldn't I wouldn't really describe noise as having phase, but kind of the same position in the sample. So when we trigger it, listen, it's going to be exactly the same every time. And if it's random, here every time I trigger it, it has a slightly different characteristic. So again, stable means it's always going to sound the same. Random, the noise is going to be a little different every time. So 
let's take out the noise. Let's move on to our next module, the sampler. And I really like the sampler in this thing. So the sampler works quite easily. You have a drop down menu here, which comes with a ton of really nice uh, samples that j just come with Faceplant. Or what's really nice is you can actually add user folders and you can add your own. So the only ones I've played around with are my bases. And you actually notice you get a nice preview up top as you scroll through them. And my bases are already labeled by note. So this is gonna make things way easier. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select a bass sound. It loads it up. Now the next important thing to make this sampler work is you need to set the root note of the sound for it to play in concert tuning. Concert tuning, meaning if I play a C on my keyboard, the sound being outputted is also a C. So thankfully I have this labeled. This sound is an F sharp. So I can select a nice F sharp here. If you don't know that, you're gonna have to use tuner or some spectral device to help you find that out or your ear and a piano. So now this is gonna play in concert tuning. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. Now you have the same parameters we've looked at previously. Level, semitone, sense, harmonic, shift in hertz, phase, the menu we were looking at here where you can load folders, browse samples. Now below the root option was an offset. And what this is, is the starting position of our sample. Notice how we're only starting at the end. Pretty straightforward. Now to the right of that, we have looping options. The looping options are quite nice and quite reminiscent of the Ableton uh, sampler. So if you click and drag and you switch it from off to infinite, what's gonna happen is it's gonna start from our start point and then based off the loop brackets, the start and the length, it'll loop in that area. So notice how it starts from here and loops in there. Now what this cross fade does is you can see adds little volume fade so you don't that get that kind of aggressive click from when it ends and restarts. See how we got a click there? If we cross fade it, that smooths things out nicely. Just a bit smoother, I quite like that. Now, below that, if you keep scrolling, we have some other looping modes. So you'll notice we had this sustain mode appear. And how this works is when we release our sound, and I'm adding release to the ADSR, we'll come back to that in a minute. When we release it, it stops looping and continues to play through the sample. See how it did a final kind of jump to the end? Where if we went back to the infinite mode, it just keeps looping that once you release. So they're quite similar. The only difference is sustain sustains this, but then it releases. Now the next mode is forward reverse. What this does is instead of restarting the loop, when it reaches its endpoint, it starts to play backward, then forward, then backward, then forward. Just like that. And then the last mode is reverse. It only plays backward, then restarts from the end point every time. And that's it for the loop modes. And that's actually it for the sampler. Very simple very easy to follow along so I quite like that and then our last type here is wavetable wavetable if you've played with serum massive wavetable in ableton a very popular type of synthesis right now and again these settings at the bottom here are all the same from the previous types but then here in the drop down menu we can pick from all these really nice wavetable types which we scroll through with this frame <laughs> If I lower the octave, you can hear that sounds really nice. And you get the nice unison options on the right as well. 
Let's check out these cool scream ones, for example. Now there's also this band limit option here, which is essentially used to high cut uh, this sound to deal with it when you're uh, when you're doing FM synthesis and things like that, and the the high frequency content gets too strong. Even this sound, I find a little brittle. So it just applies a nice low pass filter. Now what's also really powerful about this is you can load your own wavetables. You can, you can actually load wave files. So we could load a sort of bass sound and it would create a wavetable out of it. You can also use file types. Now I haven't confirmed this, but I saw in other videos, you can actually load serum wavetables. So already, you have amazing wavetables that come with this, but you can also add your own and create your own. Not only can you add your own, not only can you use wave files to create your own, but where this is really powerful is when you hit this pencil tool, you open up the wavetable editor. Now, I'm gonna save the wavetable editor for a separate tutorial, because I think it's pretty deep, and I don't wanna overwhelm you guys. This is a beginner crash course. But you have a lot of really powerful options in terms of drawing with the waveform, adding specific wave shapes into the sound, drawing with a pencil tool freehand. You can draw in very specific harmonics, which change the waveform. It's quite nice. And it's also, honestly, quite simple. That's what I like about it as well. But again, I still want to save it for another video. But do know if you want to create your own wavetables, not just using uh, a wave file or a FLAC file, you have this pencil tool. Now, the nice thing is that is it for the generator types. It's actually quite simple, but we are nowhere near complete with the generator section. Let's keep going. So what you'll notice is again, once you insert your first generator, it's automatically grouped together and it's automatically routed to an output. Now your output has your ADSR envelope. If you don't know what ADSR is, I recommend checking out another video, but this is how we're gonna sculpt the volume of our sound essentially. Typical ADSR type movement and sound. Now you have a send, so how this sound actually outputs is based off this send. So by default, it goes to lane one, which means our signal is going from here into the lane one, but we can also change that to lane two, three, we can go straight to the master, or there's even an option called sideband, which is gonna allow us to side chain to certain effects down the road. For now, let's stick to lane one. Now you also have gain and panning. Now, if we want to add another generator in here, it's quite simple. You simply select it from the drop-down menu. Now, we're not hearing this one right now because it doesn't have an output, so we have to drag it in. And now we're hearing them both go combine here and go into this one output. Now, you have a few other options as well. You also have a effects that you can add in here. So you have distortion built in and notice how our output went to the distortion. But we're not currently hearing it because it doesn't have an output. So this also needs to be added in line. So now it's going these two generators into distortion and that's going into our output. Now the distortion works quite easily. You have a nice nice types to pick from, overdrive, saturate, fold back, sign, and hard clip. You have a drive amount, a bias, which will also change the characters, which will change the characteristic of the distortion, and simple mix. Now I'm gonna just fix up our envelope here, make things nice and tight. Now we also have one other effect type in here as well. We have the filter again. 
we're not hearing it because it's not routed in. So we have to drag it up and let's put it before the distortion. Now the filter is quite simple. You have all your basic filter types, low pass, band pass, high pass, notch, low shelf, peak, and high shelf. Once you've selected your type, you've got a cutoff and Q. Now with certain types as well, such as the shelves, you have gain. So right now we're boosting the lows below the cutoff which going into the distortion will have its own type of sound. Now there's also the other utility type. So there's the group, which is not necessary. It just helps keep everything together as a unit. You can also minimize groups to make things nice and simple here or delete entire groups. Now the nice thing is if you did what I just did and delete the entire group, you have this undo button up top. Don't forget this. So we're gonna undo. So we have the group, but we also have some other auxiliary uh, utility types. You have this aux setting here, which is different than the output. What the output does is it goes to the lanes, but what we can do is we can actually send things to this aux and we can send multiple things to this aux to then send elsewhere. So it's not quite a group, it's more like a send and return or a bus that you can route things to. So what you would do is let's say we want to send this wavetable to that. What we do is we take its output with this little plus and we drag it there. Now, if this aux had its own output, so we're gonna have to go down here, add another output, we can hear that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn down this groove. So what we're hearing right now is this aux going to this output. You can see that things can get kind of confusing though, so that's when you might wanna put things in groups. So what we'll do is we'll make another group and we'll put this output in it and we'll put this aux in it to keep track. So, so now we're hearing the audio going to this aux into this output. And again, you can route as much as you want into this aux. And then all it simply has is level and an invert phase option. So this is just a nice way of grouping signals, multiple signals going to one place within this generator section. Now there's something else besides an aux as well. Uh, we've looked at output, but there's also a mix knob. And what a mix do, what a mix does is similar to an aux, but what it does is it just takes all the signals above it. So the reason you kind of want a mix other than an aux is auxes can kind of be anywhere within the generator section, while a mix takes the things above it in the group. Now you may be wondering to yourself, if we have an output module, why would we want an aux or a mix module? The reason for this is something we're gonna double back to. It's, it gives us the ability to combine multiple signals in one place, and we're actually gonna use those signals as modulation sources later, which again is what I think makes phase plant so powerful, is audio rate modulation, and allows us to have more than one audio rate modulation source, auxed or mixed together, sent somewhere else. And what that does, that actually leads me to our next section, the modulators. So the modulator section works quite similarly. You click to add a module in and you have some several different types. The first, quite simply, is an envelope. And the envelope is an ADSR that you can map to something. Now, to map it to something, what you do, and let's say, we want to move this cutoff. What you do is you hit this plus button and then anything that became highlighted orange, you click. We'll click it again to stop. So what we need to do now is set the mod depth by clicking and dragging. So we can hear 
that this is now modulating that with this shape. Now you'll notice that we're moving the cutoff forward. That's because automatically this envelope is pushing things in a positive direction, as you can see by this little blue bar here. But we can change that. We can also set this to bipolar, which means it would go two directions. Pass, it goes above the original cutoff point and below it. And we can invert the range so it goes down instead of up. But I'm going to keep things at unipolar. Now let's map this to something else. Let's hit a little plus. Let's map this to the mix here of our distortion. Now let's drag. Now let's click to stop this. We're going to drag down our distortion and we're going to send it in a positive mod depth direction. Now lastly, I'm going to map it to this gain as well. So I'm going to turn down the gain and I'm going to click its little orange button, set its mod depth. Notice how you can do it either at the parameter or at the modulator source. There we go. Now we have one nice smooth movement where all the effects are moving together. So the envelope's quite simple. Now if we don't want the envelope, if we want a different modulator source, what we'll do is we'll delete it and we'll add in an LFO. We're going to map it to the same thing, so I'm going to click it. I'm going to add it to the volume. I'm going to add it to the mix of the distortion and our filter cutoff. Now don't forget you also have to set mod depth. Now you have the same options here by clicking. Is this unipolar, which means it's going one direction from the original parameter's position. Bipolar, which means it goes both forward and past the position. Or inverted, which means it'll go one direction but opposite. We're going to leave things at unipolar for now. Now if we want to make this just kind of a glorified envelope, what we can do is we can set this to one shot which means it goes through its entire cycle one time and it stops. If we have re-trigger on, it's going to restart every time I trigger it. So where if re-trigger is off, it's continuously cycling. And every time I trigger a note, it picks up wherever it's supposed to be. That's going to be more helpful in the context of a track. Now, speaking of in a context of a track, right now, the rate is set to free, which means it's just in hertz values. If we want to synchronize it to the host, aka our DAW, aka the track we're working on, you want to set it to sync and set the rate up here. Now, in the drop down menu, this is where we're going to pick our types. We have a saw, sine, square, and triangle. Where this gets fun, though, is when we hit the pencil tool, we can go in and create our own custom shapes, which is quite nice. And it works quite easily. All you do is you click and you add a dot and you generate your own shape, which is quite nice. You also can do some fun things with the shape. You can tur turn off the grid so it's not snapping to the grid at all, or turn on magnet so it snaps to the grid, or you can click this little gear and change the grid. So if you make things really small like two, you're getting into kind of chunkier shape territory. So this is good for making simpler shapes. So that's the LFO modulator type. Now we have a couple others. There's random, which works quite simply. And I'm just gonna randomize the volume of this sound. So I'm gonna de destroy our LFO here. And I'm going to map this to the gain of our sound. And I'm going to set full mod depth. And it works quite simply. There's rate. How random it is. So the less chaos, you can kind of see it eventually just becomes this stagnant position. And the more you increase the chaos, you're essentially increasing the possible mod depth of that randomness. Now there's a smoothing characteristic, which you 
right here doesn't make things kind of jump as randomly between positions. That's random. Random is quite simple. Now we have a couple others. We have MIDI, where we can add three different types of modulation. There's note modulation, which is key tracking, which means as you play different notes on your keyboard, it'll change the position of that source. Uh, so for example, if we set this to note, we map it to the gain. As I play different notes on my keyboard, notice the difference between a low C and a C an octave higher. Not the tone, just looking at the volume there. They're in different positions. So that's what note modulation is. Now there's also pressure modulation, which is kind of like aftertouch. So if you have a device with aftertouch, unfortunately I don't have one on me, as you press on the pad, it'll modulate that more and more. And velocity, similarly, when you impact some sort of MIDI device with velocity input, it will actually change the position of that. Again, unfortunately don't have one on me that I can use to show you, but that's what that is. Now you also have utility. Utility is quite interesting. What utility does is it combines multiple modulation sources. So I'm gonna get two LFOs going with different shapes to really make this obvious to you guys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna route those to a maximum utility. So what we do is we map it, we send that there, done. And we map this, we send this one here, done. Now let's fully increase their mod depth. Notice how we can see, and let, let's change their rates. So what we can see is both of them being modulated, but what Max does is it sets it up in its highest position between the two combined at a single moment. So what this does is it it's kind of a weird combo modulation where you add two mod sources and it combines for their maximum amount of modulation at a time and adds that to a source. So for example, if we map this to the volume now and we add a positive mod depth. It's the highest value of these both at a time. While minimum is the opposite, it'll take the smallest amount of modulation at a time. And then lastly, there's multiply. And what multiply does is, it, well, do what you think it does. It combines and multiplies their modulation. So they actually add up together. So let's take a peek at this. So let's add both their mod depths fully. Let's map this to volume. And let's set a pot of positive mod depth. And what's nice is you can even multiply the amount of modulation. So see how it's so much modulation mod depth. Now it's either pretty much full or closed. There isn't really much in between because we multiplied it, but we can also shrink it. So point one, look at the mod depth of these two combined now. It's shrunk quite a bit. So that's the full amount, that's one tenth, and you can even do as crazy as 1,000 times the multiplier amount. So it gets pretty crazy. Now there's one other type of modulation we haven't looked at, and this is the big one. This is what makes uh, Phase Plant so cool to me, is audio rate modulation. So how it works is notice how at the output of our different generators here. We have a little plus. Well, this plus can actually be used to set up modulation. So let's let's simplify this a little bit. Let's get two analog generators going. Let's keep it quite simple. Let's have a triangle. Let's even take out our filter. And let's add a nice sine wave. Now, let's say for example, and actually let's let's take out our distortion as well. So let's say I want to set up frequency modulation synthesis. What I would do is I would take the output of this, this is now a modulation source, and I'm gonna map it to the Hertz value of this, and let's increase the mod depth. Now 
notice how we have started to create frequency modulation synthesis. So what's cool is we can actually take this triangle out of here. And now we're just using it as a modulation source. Let's delete this modulation. And it's as simple as double clicking it. And let's add it to something new. Let's do phase modulation synthesis. Let's modulate the phase of this sound and see what happens. Pretty wild. And why don't we do amplitude modulation synthesis as well? Let's modulate this thing's volume. So what we're doing is we're doing audio rate modulation to this, which is quite cool. You can also do it to the effects. So let's add the distortion back in here. Let's modulate the drive amount. So we'll hit this plus and we'll modulate the drive. Now what's cool is you can even take the output after an effect and use that as an, aud uh, an audio rate modulation source. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add some sort of other sound source. So why don't we take another analog. Let's group this analog. So we're going to group it, drop it in. We're going to give it a nice output. So we're listening to that right now. So we're listening to that right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the output from the distortion point of where the distortion is. And we're going to use that to modulate this thing's phase. So you can see the modulation power of this thing is, in my opinion, what makes it stronger than something like Serum or makes it one of the most high-end things on the market because it has this really cool semi-modular feeling where everything's modulating everything. It's very powerful. So that is the modulation section and the modulators within Phase Plant. Let's finish things off. We've got two more sections. Let's check out the effects and then we'll finish off with a few other final details. Now the last of the main sections is the effects section over here and it's divided into three separate parts. Lane one, two, and three. And the reason for this is just for routing. Now by default, how it goes is lane one goes into lane two, lane two into lane three. And typically default any of the output Output, output modules in here go to lane one to make things pretty linear though you can do more interesting routing for more interesting effects and things like that for example you could theoretically send just this group to lane two just this group to lane one but then lane one actually goes straight to lane three and lane two goes to lane three so kind of this gets affected this one group gets affected separately from this group that goes and gets affected in here and out, etc. So it, it, it's for more interesting routing options. Now, how it works is quite simple. Before we get into it though, I am gonna say similar to the wavetable creation, I'm gonna save specific tutorials on the effects for another video just because there's so many and this video could end up quite long if we went to each module. So I'm going to be pretty brief in the actual effects themselves. How it works though, is you click and you are given a ton of nice options. So I'm gonna kinda, I'm gonna kinda blaze through. So you have a nice three band EQ where you have simple control over the lows, mids, and highs, similar to your kinda typical DJ EQ. And you change the different cutoff points there. Now, now, if I want to add an effect to the lane, I simply click under it and it's going to go linearly from top to bottom. So if I add the bit crusher after this, it's going from this three band EQ down into the bit crusher. 
So again, the routing will affect things. So you have a nice bit crusher. You have what's called this carve EQ, which if we click this little window option, opens up a separate window and you kind of have this interesting EQ that you can design and get ultra specific with. Next, you have a chorus. Pretty straightforward, makes the sound nice and chorusy. You have a comb filter. Which I always love the sounds of comb filters, so happy to see that. You've got a compressor, just kind of your typical compressor. Now, notice we have this sidechain option here. So again, remember we can actually route the outputs of certain things to the sideband. So we could send this to the sideband, which we wouldn't hear, but what would happen is this would be taking an input signal for something like sidechain compression within a complex patch or something like that. You have a delay, pretty simple delay. You can synchronize it, milliseconds, set it to ping pong, etc. Again, Kind of going quick through this, my apologies, but again, we'll save it for another video. Now there's this disperser effect, which is a bit of a unique effect, which I'm not going to get into right now, but I recommend playing with it. I quite like it. There's, you know, quite simply a distortion, which works very similarly to the distortion unit in here. There's an ensemble, which is similar to chorus, but works a little differently. It's kind of more like a unison than just the chorus. You have a fatrator, which is a separate distortion unit. You have a filter, which works very simply, similar to the other filter. Flanger. One of the nicer flangers I've heard out there, you can get some good results out of it. A cool formant filter where you can actually see the vowels in behind here. And as we move this around, you hear we actually get some nice vowel sounds. I'm actually going to take out our distortion now because it's kind of taken away from that. So that can be quite nice for having nice vowel filter movement. A frequency shifter, if we want to sh uh, shift this linearly in hertz across its spectrum. <laughs> now what's nice too, for example, one thing I like to do with frequency shifters is if you use a small hertz value like this and you bring down the dry wet, you get this kind of nice bubbly effect. Now we can't really achieve that here, but there's a nice mix knob per lane, which is a dry wet knob for all the effects in the lane. So with something like the frequency shifter where we don't have a dry wet knob, easily and readily available, we can go down into this mix for the entire lane. Now below that we have a nice simple gain, just some volume for some control. You have a gate, so we can cut out the really quiet things we don't like in a sound. We have a Haas effect, which is a type of stereo effect, for those that don't know. By delaying one side later than the other. We have a cool ladder filter with a built-in saturator, which is just more options for different filters there. You've got a limiter which is nice to kind of slap on the end of things if things are getting too loud. Loud, Maybe put it in lane three, for example. Have a nice limiter at the end of things. Phase distortion. Which can get some crazy results. You have a plain old phaser. Which works quite simply. A pitch shifter. So this just works in semitones. Works pretty easily. A nice resonator, which can add nice resonant harmonics into the sound. Reverb. Pretty straightforward. A reverse effect. So what this does is it actually takes the incoming signal 
and it'll play it backward. With a sound like this, it may not be as obvious, but if we threw something in a sampler, for example, you'd get some much more obvious results. So it's a fun one to play with. There's a ring modulator. Fun. A slice EQ, which is kind of your more typical EQ, where you add bells in and works very similarly to a regular EQ. A stereo effect. Now what this does is it's a lot like Ableton's utility where you're just controlling the amount of stereo and the amount of middle information. So if we add unison to this. You're turning up the middle and the sides. Now you have a tape stop effect. Could be fun to play with. A trance gate, which adds rhythmic gating. Which can be cool for sounds. And a transient shaper, which can be good for adding punch to drum-like sounds or even plucks and things like that that now again it's pretty deep if we go into each effect right now so we're not going to but one other thing i want to say as well is there's this poly button here and what this does is it'll actually process each voice separately which can be really good because sometimes for example all these voices going into distortion will have a certain type of sound to it but if you distort each voice separately and then combine their outputs that'll have a different sound so this is really cool you can also mute and solo specific lanes, which is quite handy. And then at the end, everything goes to the master. Otherwise, you don't have a signal. So now this brings us to our last section, which is just a few final details. You have a master volume. You have this nice little keyboard function, which will let you see what key you're working with and also play with a pitch wheel. Now this pitch wheel's bend range will depend on the pitch bend range here. So if this is 12, we're gonna bend things a full octave. Now also at the bottom right below the pitch wheel, notice how when I hover my mouse over pitch wheel, it says pitch wheel below it. What this allows us to do is actually get little info on things within phase plant. So if you're ever lost and you don't know what the shift is here, you can read at the bottom oscillator tuning as a fixed offset. So if you need a little bit more detail about something, that's what that little window is at the bottom. Now you have a glide amount here. So if we turn this up, it glides between notes. Now right now it's gliding, but it's still polyphonic. What we need to do is go over to the polyphony, turn down the voices, and set it to legato or retrigger. Now when it's set to retrigger, it will retrigger the envelope the next time you trigger a note. Notice how we can hear the clicking? While the legato will actually keep the ADSR of the previous note. Which has a bit more of a smooth sound to it. Now there's also a master unison, so this is the final output. Final unison for things. Pitch bend range we already looked at. There's a master pitch, so we could at the end of a patch turn everything down 12 semitones. And that is it. Up top, again, that's where we can create and save presets. And really, that's it. It's a very complex, rich sounding synth, and it's all on one window. That's what's so beautiful about this. That's what's so powerful about this synth. That is Bass Plant. Now again, if you like this, hang around for other tutorials. Subscribe to this channel. We're gonna do a wavetable editor one. We're gonna go into the effects, but that is the beginner crash course for Kilohertz Phase Plant. I hope you guys liked it. I love this synth. Again, it's one of the best in the world now. 
wouldn't necessarily consider it the best personal opinion, but I love it and I'm going to be playing with this thing a hell of a lot. So there we go, guys. That's it. That's the beginner crash course for Kill Hertz Phase Plan. I hope you guys liked it. Peace.